Hey, Plant YouTube, what is the biggest, biggest, biggest planting mistake you've made? Let's go. I tried to write it down, but then I ended up always like wanting to read what I wrote down. So anyways, I'm just going to try to tell you guys the story. I think my, the biggest planting mistake that I've made, and I've always wanted to share this with um, my subscribers too, is how aggressively I treated my plants for pests. Um, in the beginning of my plant journey, I wasn't really aware of pests. So the very first time that I saw a mealybug on my really, really beautiful philodendron micans, I really just panicked and uh, I was so stressed out and I just thought, oh my God, I'm going to have a huge mealybug bug infestation like within the next, next 10 minutes or something. I was so scared. So in response to that fear and anxiety, I was just acting from that place, right? So I was spraying the plants down really aggressively with insecticidal soap, which I now know that kind of velvety leaf plants, they don't do very well with like really kind of harsh treatments. And also I had it potted in a terracotta pot and I was just imagining, oh my God, all these mealybug eggs are like inside the soil. So without even wetting the potting mix first, and let the roots kind of uh, loosen up a little bit from the terracotta pot. I just kind of tried to yank it out from the terracotta pot. Terracotta pot. Um, so that damaged a lot of roots and then I put it into a Ziploc bag to like isolate it from all the rest of my plants and needless to say, within a really short time, that mycans just perished and I feel like so guilty and so sad for having lost that plant, not due to the pest, but due to how I treated it. I honestly think that in terms of pests, I probably was the worst pest for my plants. If I were to kind of give myself advice for to, to the two years ago me, I would tell myself to like first remove the plant on the rest of the plant and then really like take a deep breath and remind myself that this is nature. Something is always eating something. Um, so take a deep breath, calm my nerves down first, and then from that place, decide how I want to go about um, dealing with the pest. And like really like using water and removing most of the um, visible pests, it will go such a long way for the plant and for my own like mental peace. Um, and bring down that stress level. I hope that's helpful for you guys and I hope you guys could keep calm about pests better than I was able to. Um, my name is Amy. Um, thank you so much, Jimmy, for giving me an opportunity to share on your space. Um, if You guys can find me on Instagram or YouTube as Wolfgang's Mama. I talk lots about uh, plants and my journey with them and I am an absolute Hoya and Aeroids addict. Um, yeah, I hope to see you guys around. Bye. What's up everyone? It's Simon from Planting Plants. And first of all, I would like to say thank you to Jimmy for giving me an opportunity to, to share my biggest plant mistakes with a big audience like yours. And I would also like to thank the people for watching this. I love to grow plants and most plants that I grow, I grow in an inorganic way, like in Lekka or in Lekuzopan, which I absolutely love. But my biggest plant mistake that I ever made is actually a very funny one. Because, you know, when I just started to collect plants, I didn't have the money or I didn't have the knowledge that I actually had to buy a humidifier. So back then, I sprayed my plants with just an empty bottle that I used to use for cleaning. But I had two bottles. One of them was filled with, I would say, neem oil and a little bit of water. The other one was actually filled with cleaning soap. But these were two very identical bottles. And I think you can already guess it, but one day, I was spraying all my plants. Back then I had like maybe 150 plants, way too much for me, I couldn't even care for them. But I started spraying my plants and when I was finished, I thought, well, why does it smell so good in here? And I think you can already guess it, but I then sprayed all my plants with cleaning soap. 
Back then, I was really stressed about things like this because I just spent so many money on these plants and I thought, well, they are never gonna survive. But thank God, they all actually survived. So that was my biggest plant mistakes, just confusing the spray bottle with water, with the spray bottle, with cleaning soap. And I'm happy for me that it turned out okay, but I wouldn't recommend spraying your plants with soap. When you have no normal spray bottle and you use a recycled cleaning bottle, keep in mind that you actually use the right bottle and not the one with cleaning soap inside. That was my biggest mistake. Thank you guys for watching and if you want to see more about my channel, just check it out. It's called Planting Plants and I hope to see you again very soon. Hi, my name is Lynn. I'm also known as Mini Botanist on Instagram and on YouTube. So today I'm just going to mention about one of my biggest mistakes ever since I became a plant mom. So I didn't start collecting plants until December of 2020 and I didn't get into the more rare plants until January of 2021. And ever since then, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've overspent on a lot of things, but one of the biggest mistakes that I've made uh, ever since then was putting my poor philodendron mommy too close to my grow light um, to the point that I can no longer save it. Um, I didn't notice the gradual change in the color of the leaves. I thought it was a reflection from the grow light, so I didn't think much of it until I noticed the curling of the leaves. And once I started noticing that, I took it out of the greenhouse hoping to save it, but unfortunately it was just no longer saved. Like it was so scorched to the point that it turned to orange yellowish orange and it was all curled up. I'll show you a quick picture of the before and after of what it looks like and sadly that was one of my biggest mistakes and I hope you don't make the same mistake as I do. Hello all you beautiful houseplanty people on Legends of Monstera. So glad our paths have crossed. I'm Marina from Millennial Planter both here on YouTube and on Instagram where I just like to talk about the good and the bad side of owning houseplants because we all know it's not always that glamorous. Which brings me to today's topic, um, Jimmy's topic, which is just sharing my planting, my biggest planting mistake. And honestly, I can definitely share more than one because there's been a few mistakes in my years of owning houseplants. But I would say my biggest mistake is by far just overthinking houseplant care. I am definitely a plant helicopter Parent, so I'm just constantly looking after my plants, constantly watering them when they shouldn't be watered, constantly rotting plants, especially those propagations because I just can't leave my plants alone. And it has been a learning process for me to just relax a little bit and just trust the process, trust mother nature to know that I don't need to be on top of it all the time. I can just let my plants relax they know what they're doing better than I know what they're doing. Kind of taking a step back from my plants has really just made it less stressful for me because I used to get overwhelmed really easily with all the plant care I needed to do every single day. And it was a little bit stressful, especially with having so many house plants, but just relaxing a little bit and not being such a helicopter plant parent, I'm able to actually enjoy my plants a little bit more and just kind of sit back, let them do their thing. And at the same time, it also helped me pay more attention to my plants, kind of pay more attention to the foliage from afar. And I could just do all this now just by looking and not necessarily hovering over them, feeling their leaves, breaking off new growth, knocking over pots. That has definitely been uh, probably my biggest mistake, just constantly hovering over my plants. I mean, I'm sure we've all been there and trust me, I still make this mistake all the time because I, I don't know, I'm just an over worrier and over thinker and over waterer, which is why everything is in terracotta in my house. <laughs> Anyways, that is my little tidbit to you. If you are a chronic overwaterer or a chronic hoverer of plants, just chill. It, it'll be okay. The plants know what they're doing. <laughs> With all that being said, thank you so much, Jimmy, for having me on your channel again. 
you're amazing and to all you beautiful planty people i hope to see you on my channel i am millennial planter both here on youtube and on instagram and let me know jimmy sent you over i would love to see you all in my comments and just in my community i uh, hope you all have a wonderful day <laughs> bye hey everyone nikki here with thoughts where she grows i'm back with jimmy's channel and i wanted to go over biggest planting mistakes so not necessarily my biggest planting mistake in this particular instance. When I first moved to, um, to this store downtown and I just had a couple of these little humidifiers, it wasn't enough for the alocasia cupria. I brought one of the cuprias out and the humidity was probably in the 40% and within two days that leaf just dried right up. Leaf dried right up. It, so yeah, I did actually have a bit of a incident actually with the cupria i mean it's fine it pushed out a new leaf that one's just in the back recovering the new leaf looks absolutely stunning but you want them to have as many leaves as possible right alocasias a lot of people think that alocasias normally will just produce like one or two leaves and then that's kind of what they do like they're people will say oh when one alocasia leaf falls off it'll produce a new one and then that's just how they grow. But that's not really necessarily just how they grow. Like in some circumstances, yes, the old leaves do fall off, but you can definitely get alocasias with like multiple growth. Like this one has three and a fourth leaf coming on through. This is the oldest leaf. As you can see, he has lost his luster, right? He still got his shine course stunning still has its shine new life will, <laughs> new leaf new life new leaf will be shiny as well absolutely stunning this is an alocasia cupria as an example very one of the um more difficult plants to take care of but let's not get into that so with alocasias i feel like a lot of people don't really give them the care that they need yes they can survive in um some subpar environments you want to give them the best chance possible. So I highly recommend upping your humidity depending on the alocasia. They can be very um, dependent. Like the alocasia care can be very different from alocasia to alocasia. The cupria here needs a minimum of 80% humidity. I don't have that in my store. My store's humidity is usually about 65%. So I have a humidifier that bumps the the humidity up just specifically around this plant it sits there it has a micro environment it likes it uh, clearly it likes it it's doing great um, so that's a good way to bump up the humidity for this specific plant uh, a lot of people don't provide enough humidity as well as not enough light they'll put their alocasias in kind of a darker corner i have some alocasia fry ducks here they don't need i would say like quite as much light necessarily as a cupria I have these just under 35 watt LED lights. It's nothing crazy and it loves it. So if you want to keep your alocasias happy, definitely get supplemental light for it, as well as I don't let the, the plant dry out completely. I'll water it when it's 75% dry and then I'll give it a very thorough soaking. So once a week, I would say I soak the medium completely I just have to take a second to appreciate that. It's not, ooh, hello. My favorite thing about alocasias, they dance. Like, she's dancing. Sorry, I have like the worst like ADHD. <laughs> Self-diagnosed. Hey, okay, look, a squirrel. There's people watching me film too, that's cool. So anyways. Yeah, give it um, a little bit more light. I say bright indirect light is perfect. Bump up the humidity, a minimum of 50% humidity for your average alocasias. Um, as I said, mine's about 60% here, they love it. Don't let them completely dry out. Water when 75% dry. And then medium indirect light. It's all about the alocasia, baby. The alocasia black velvet here can tolerate um, a little bit lower humidity as the leaves are 
a little bit thicker, kind of velvety on the top, and then the bottom is almost like a rubbery. So it is a, like a little bit more succulent than some of the alocasia leaves, if that makes sense. Also the silver dragons, all the dragon ones are a bit thicker, so they can handle the like 50% humidity um, aside like the cupria can't. The cupria needs like 80% plus. So that's another beautiful one, very popular here. So if you don't have the high humidity requirements, then one of these will be a little bit better for you. So the alocasia care is probably one of the biggest planting mistakes uh, that I see in the planting community is not having enough humidity for your alocasias, um, bumping up the light to a medium indirect light, and don't let them completely dry out. They won't appreciate you for that. Water them when they're about 75% dry and then give them a good water. So I, I also have lots of alocasias available. Um, as usual, links to my page will be down in the description. I thank you all. I thank you all for taking the time to watch my little clip here. Thanks, guys. That's how she goes. All right, guys, this is it for this episode. Thank you so much for all the YouTubers that came and contribute. Guys, if you vibed with them, definitely check out their channel. Give them your support. Uh, Till next time, happy planting.